Hey there, everybody. It is time for another amazing author of the Wisdom Gifts book. This time I'm bringing to you Monica, also known as Moni, also known as Moni in the Middle, also known as Monica Crowell. If I say her last name right, she'll correct me. I don't ever get to say her last name because we're always in spaces together and I just call her Moni, but I want you to meet her now. Monica Crowell is an author and entrepreneur. She was born in Ohio and spent teenage, her teenage years and young adult years in Cincinnati, Ohio. She graduated from the Ohio State University with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and an associate degree in informational technology of science from Bryant and Stratton College. She currently lives in Virginia. Her mom introduced her to the fundamentals of reading when she was very young, which uh, developed into a passion for reading all types of genres. She also creates unique jewelry for those looking for something different and lightweight, and she might be wearing a pair right now is all I'm saying. In her spare time, she enjoys reading and spending time with her family and friends, and she enjoys a good old, old school concert. I know how much she loves music and she's passionate about it. And she has two grown children who are making their own way. Please welcome to the stage, Monica, also known as Moni. Hey, Monica. Hello. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. And yes, you are wearing a pair of your 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 earrings. And I have some too. Just I should I they're packed away and so I didn't put them on today. I should be wearing them. I love them. Well, thank you. Yeah. So creative. And you're right, you know, in your bio I read that they are different and they're lightweight, but we'll come to the jewelry in just a moment. You're also wearing a top that you made. You're just a creative person, aren't you? I try to be. Um, sometimes I just don't know what I might think of. And usually it's, you know, when I'm resting or, you know, I might have a little downtime and it just pops into my head. Yeah. So let's start with your jewelry line. So let's talk about it. So your jewelry line is called HMM Jewelry For You. That's HMM Jewelry For You dot com. What does HMM stand for? Well, my biggest influencers were my grandmother and my mother. The H stands for my grandmother's first name, which is Hattie. The other M is for my mother's name, Marilyn, and then my name, Monica. Nice. So you've put all the legacy in the name of your business, which I love. Yes. And I had thought about this long, long time ago because um, and, and forgot about it until I came across something that I had written uh, once upon a time, and I thought, well, I need to stay with that name. I love it. HMM Jewelry for you. Well, thank you uh, for sharing that because I didn't know what the HMM stood for. And I, like I said, I have a pair. What I do love about them is they're creative and, you know, sort of culturally beautiful and and lightweight, too. So you don't have to weigh down your, uh, your earlobes. Was that a, a purposeful design? Yes. The reason why I enjoy the lightweight is because a long time ago I had an accident and I almost tore my left lobe. Oh. And after that, because uh, it was hanging a little bit low, I couldn't wear any heavy earrings. Mm -hmm. And it always popped into my mind because for a while I couldn't find any earrings that weren't that were lightweight. So I thought, well, maybe I could try to do something on my own. And I ran into different uh, festivals where they were creating the earrings and I saw what they were doing and I liked it. So I said, well, I'm just going to uh, buy me some material and see if I can do it myself. I love it. <clears throat> I love that you created something out of a need that you had for yourself and what you saw out in the marketplace and you create something for your, for your clients that is based out of your own passion, your own desire, your own creativity, right? Right. Yes. Um, and also in, in my travels, um, I've ran into other people that have had the same same problem as well. Mm -hmm. So you create something wonderful for them. There's also something that you said in your sentence that I don't know if the people caught when you said talked about the, when you were talking about going to various festivals. What I know about you, that another passion that you have is 
music. And, you know, we spend a lot of time in space together during the pandemic and being in the pandemic and not being able to go to concerts was really, really tough for you because you love music so much. Can you talk to us about what music does for your soul and why you love it so much? Why you love it? I would say that it brightens up my spirit. It talks to me. When I was in college, um, it was a lot because you had the books, the the courses. And in order for me to even relax sometimes and tune other things out, I would play, you know, go and play different music. I had discovered this uh, music store that uh, sold a lot of uh, albums at a very reasonable price, you could get them anywhere from 25 cents to $3. And at that time, albums were selling for anywhere from $5.99 to $10.99. Mm -hmm. So it was a good bargain. And so a lot of times it was used. And um, sometimes you would happen to cr come across uh, a new one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things as far as music goes is that music has been inbred in my family since I was little. Mm -hmm. In my family, you had to learn how to play at least two instruments. Oh, I learned how to play the flute and the piano. I didn't know that, Monica. I didn't know. Flute, yes. and, flute and, and piano. And the piano. And I haven't played them for, <laughs> for years, though. But uh, I actually wanted to play, learn how to play the uh, guitar. So... Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, I did actually buy my own guitar. Mm -hmm. I'm still in the process of trying to find someone to teach me because, you know, then everything shut shut down and with COVID and everything. Yeah. And I have gone on YouTube and learned a little bit on my own as well. I love it. So tell me how it feels now that things have opened back up again and you've started going to concerts because you always post pictures of you going to these concerts. Tell us how it feels to have that, have the world open back up again so you can be attached to your passion, be, you know, in person in your passion again? Well, it, feel, it feels great, but at the same time, it's still cautious. I'm still kind of picky and a little choosy as far as the venue and, and who I go to see now uh, because of the COVID. Because even during COVID, there were a couple of uh, artists that were actually having concerts on, um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was able to uh, tune into those. Um, actually, one that comes to mind, Brian Culberson, he he had what he developed is called the Hang, and every Friday he would have a concert for an hour. Nice. And sometimes he would bring special guests on the show as well. So that kept me going as well. Uh, the first concert I would say that I saw after COVID was. Um, I want to say it was Howard Hewitt, mm -hmm. and that was at a, a very small venue, and it was a very, pretty good show. Uh, Sherelle was also with him, I think I saw and um, I've that. gone to a few since then. I would say the best one that I've gone to recently was one with Stephanie Mills, Gladys Knight, and Patti LaBelle. I had to travel to see that one. That was in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> was it worth the trip? It was worth the trip. It was definitely worth the trip. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I, you know, I know how important music is to you. And so I wanted to hear more about your passion. And we're going to expect to hear some guitar uh, very soon. Right, Miss Monica? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a little bit of a trip through your chapter, shall we? And what really... Um, Thank you for being a part of the Wisdom Gifts experience, and thank you for being willing to share your wisdom of forgiveness and coming full circle and having growth and being able to look back there and say, what would I change and what would I do differently and being open because your story is really beautiful. It's about forgiveness, it's about relationship and about healing a relationship, isn't it? Do you want to share a little bit about your chapter? Well, my chapter is about getting back with my ex. We have been divorced for 11 years. And even though we, we got a divorce, we still maintained a friendship. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it, was, it wasn't easy. It was still kind of figuring out how to make it fit. But I would say uh, 
I had made a promise to my daughter that we will always have a uh, family time mm-hmm. and do family and do family events. And we always had Thanksgiving together. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like we had time to be upset. We had a very amicable divorce, which nowadays I know is kind of unheard of. And I mean, it's kind of hard not to when you've been friends for so long, Mm -hmm. even though our marriage wasn't working, he was still a great person and a great dad. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to make a commitment? Because listen, you had been friends for so long, but the relationship as a marriage didn't work out. And, you know, you said that you did it amicably, but, you know, there are plenty of folks who've been friends for a long time and you think that you're going to break up and, and make it friendly. What what did you all, why was it so important to keep that commitment to having a friendship in place? We had, we had children together. And even though they are now grown, it still makes more sense to have that friendship because if one of our children are going through something, we need to be able to talk about it. We need to be able to have that conversation and it needs to be a friendly conversation. And um, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We also, you know, we also, I know his, his family, he knows my family and that circle has never been broken really. Mm -hmm. Even though we got, we, got a divorce the the closeness as far as the knit the close knit part of it it, it was never broken mm-hmm. i mean my sisters if they were in town and they needed a place to stay his his place at the time was bigger they would call him up and say hey can we stay there so it was never it was never broken as far as that that goes there was just some things that was going on between the two of us that at that time we could not get past. Mm-hmm. We the communication wasn't um, as good as it is now, mm-hmm. and I think that both of us had some growing to do. Even though we got I got married late in life, we still had some growing up to do, mm-hmm. and it was better for us to grow apart to do the growing apart versus trying to fix it while we were still in it, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And it really does really speak to your wisdom. <laughs> that happens to be the name, one of the names of the book, but it speaks to your wisdom, both of your wisdom for um, being able to understand that and to choose not to be adversarial about it. Because even all those things you just mentioned, everybody knew everybody and you know all these other things and he was a great dad. I can hear your respect for him as a great dad coming into place. I think that there are a lot of people who create adversary just because they're your ex now. And I love that you chose not to even, there was no reason to create uh, an enemy out of him because there were so so many warm vibes. And I just want to commend you all for not doing that. That could have, I've seen that happen before where people create the pain, even though the pain wasn't there. It was just a communication, you know, disconnect. So, What was, um, and you know, you really do go beautifully into the whole chapter about the history that you all had together and, and how you knew each other and how you met and, you know, all these beautiful things. And why wouldn't it be a warm, there's no looks on paper, like why wouldn't it work? What do you think was the moment? So you, you were divorced for, like you said, 11 years, 12 years, you said? It was 11 years. What was the moment? Okay. So what was the moment that you both went? Hmm, there's still something extra here other than friendship and warm feelings and respect for each other. What was the moment that went, hey, wait a minute? I would say it it started when I had my nasal surgery last January. And it was um, the way, because my daughter initially was supposed to come and take care of me, but she had just bought a townhouse And she had to pack up and move. So she suggested her dad. And I was like, hmm, I don't know about that. (laughs) But then after I thought about it, I was like, okay, he's retired. So, you know, he had the time. And I said, okay, 
well, I need someone to be here and I'm okay with that. And um, it was during that period of time that the way he took care of me and the fact that right before I went into the, uh, into the surgery, he actually prayed for me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, okay. And when I had an issue the first night and um, he got scared. I mean, I was already scared, but you know, just the attentiveness to, to what all my needs and everything, making sure that I take the uh, med- medication and everything because I'm one who I have to be in a whole lot of pain to take medication. Mm-hmm. I was in a whole lot of pain, so I did have to take the medication. So he made sure that I took it in a timely manner and, you know, he made sure that I ate. It was just, it was just his attentiveness that I thought, oh, wow. You know, even now, after, after we've been divorced for so long, for him to be that attentive to me and to my needs, it made me it made me feel some, you know, some kind of way. And at that point, it made me start thinking that, well, did I make a mistake the first time or are things, you know, really different mm-hmm. to the point where we can actually build on something new, not what we had, but something new. Whose idea was it to build something new? Was it yours or his? Well, he had during, you know, during the 11 years, he had from time to time, you know, asked me, well, you know, can we date, you know, can we get back together? So it was me initiating the conversation this particular time Mm -hmm. and said, okay, well, maybe we can think about trying it out and see if we might be able to do something different. And But I told him, you know, I don't want what we had. I want it to be better and different. So what makes it better and different now? The communication, the love that we have for each other, the respect that we have for each other. But more important, what I mentioned, the first part, the communication, the trust. Mm-hmm. that we that we've been building you know there's a point in your story that i know um it's in the book that um talks about a miscommunication that you thought that something was happening that wasn't happening and he thought that something was happening wasn't happening have you all is it important i should say for all of us in all of our relationships to just get everything out that we think is something so the person can explain no 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 that's not what i meant by that like how important is it to have full transparency and full truth and understanding. It's extremely important because we did go back to the issues that we were having and we did talk to talk about it in extreme detail. And that makes a big difference. We should have been able to have that conversation back then. But I think because both of he, you know, he had, he was working, I was working, we both had our different types of stresses going on. Mm-hmm. And I think because because of that, we just could not sit down and have a honest conversation and really talk about what was bothering each one of us. Mm-hmm. Now it's a lot better and easier. I don't know if it's because we're older and wiser. We can sit down and say, hey, let's talk about this. And this is what I was really thinking. And, you know, and, and not all the different, uh, I would say the different arguments that we have, we don't need to have that anymore. Just be crystal clear. And like you said, transparent, that's the biggest thing. It's hard for most people. It was definitely hard for me you know, because you grow up and you have your ideas of how things should be. You know, you read those fairy tales. And I just tell people now, I said, don't read the fairy tales because that's not reality. And when and they close the book on the ever after. They don't show you what happens after. <laughs> and that's where people get entangled into thinking, having an idea of what marriage should be like. In my opinion, 
you should sit down and you should have that conversation before you get married as far as what your ideas of what a relationship should be. What are your ideas as far as marriage should be? How should you raise your children? You should have those conversations instead of assuming that it's all going to be good because you're in that feel good moment. Mm, that's great advice. Thank you for that. And what would you say? So you've, you, this is what you would say to people before they even get married. What would you say to people if they're thinking of rekindling something? What would you say is like one of the one or two most important, important, crucial things that they need to know while, you know, well, if deciding to rekindle something? I would say, first of all, pray about it. Mm. And second of all, think about, you know, all the problems that you had beforehand. Do you see any change in that person? Because you have to be around that person to be able to see that change. And it's not a change that you're asking them to do. It's a change that should come naturally because that's who they are. You're not in, in the relationship to try to change that person because that person is the one that attracted you in the first place. There was something about that person that attracted you in the first place. And that person still exists. It's just the maturity of that person at that point in time. Okay. And you have to be able to have, you know, everybody talks about in the beginning how important communication is, but it's real easy to get in a relationship and go about your days and then realize that the communication part of, part of it dropped. True. And True. all of a sudden you're kind of stuck as to, oh, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to say it this way. There's always a good way to, to say it. Mm -hmm. And you just have to tap into that. You cannot let the communication wane. Yes. You have to continue to keep communicating. You know, if you're sitting next to each other, even watching TV, you know, you know comment every now and then about well what what you're watching together you know play play different different games you know have start liking some of the things that he liked that you didn't like mm -hmm. because it's not it's not okay if he's always trying to please you or do the things that you want to do it should be 50/50 um my grandparents were the best example of a 50-50 relationship. My grandfather worked. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, she also worked as well. She was, she was a teacher, a fifth grade teacher. And if she, if my grandfather got home before she did, he would, he would cook dinner. Mm -hmm. That was never an issue. And he was a good cook. <laughs> I learned how to do my mac and cheese from my grandfather. <laughs> That's great. So, but it's, yeah. it's all about making, you know, making it work. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have differences. You want to have differences, but mm -hmm. making it work. Making it work and being able to talk through all of it. So important. So this might be personal to ask you this, but what do the kids think? I know the kids are grown, but what do the kids think about mommy and daddy rekindling something? My son is like, you're grown. Okay, whatever. My daughter, it's kind of, it kind of takes her back to when we got a divorce. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of hesitant mm -hmm. because is this going to last this time? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, both of them were happy for us. Oh, good, good. What about the rest of the family? Do they approve or disapprove? Oh, they, they're, they're ecstatic. They you love know, my, it. My, my sister's been, you know, been asking me over the years, okay, Y'all going to get back together? <laughs> Especially since we were having Thanksgiving still together and everything as a family. So what, it was, it was constant. Back together. Were they, come on, y'all. Get it together. Were, did other people want it for you? Oh, that, definitely. Because um, it's funny how, you know, when I talk to my friends now, they're like, well, I'm happy for you. If you're happy, I'm happy for you. So, what so I'm, th you I'm thankful to have the tribe that I have around me 
that are very positive. Positive and supportive, right? Right. So what do you think? I'm not asking you to be a, a to tell the future, but what do you think? Because we know this is rekindling now and it's still relatively new. What do you think is going to happen for the two of you? What or what do you I should say, what do you hope is going to happen for the two of you? Well, we have made plans for me to move to where he's at once I retire. Okay. When it when you retiring? Well, <laughs> I'm looking at next year. <gasps> okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at next year. And um you know, the thing of as far as, you know, re remarrying, we're not sure as far as that goes because the way the government has everything set up, our, it will reduce our money. Okay. I know it shouldn't be tied to that, but I've, I've read a lot of uh, articles where you've seen seniors get together at later in life and they don't get married because of the fact that the government taps into the money or takes away the money. Well, we don't want them tapping into your money, but we love that we get to tap into your love, your possibilities, your growth, your love. And, and I'm sure there's somebody watching this right now thinking about their ex, like mm, mm -hmm. the love is still there. The respect is still there. And you've made it possible for them by talking about the, the possibilities and, and that, that communication really is the key. And so whether the government dips in or not, I'm glad, I'm glad that you all are putting it together. And uh, I know you'll keep us abreast of what's going on because we oh, want, yes. listen, we read those, those fairy tales because we want to see happily ever after. I love that you have added more depth and more richness to what their ever after really means. And um, I think that this is the kind of fairy tale I want to hear about and read about. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you so much. Um, the thing of it is, is that because I never changed my last name, when I went to have my surgery done, they didn't even question as to whether or not he was my husband. So, <laughs> I mean, in, in God's eyes, we've, we've stayed married. We've been married. I was about to say so. what God has put together. Is it what God has put together? Let not the rest of us put asunder. So I'm, I'm happy that this is that this was possible for you. And I have no idea, we have no idea how many people you will open up hope for that this is, that this is possible if this is what they really want. So thank you. I hope so. I, I want to thank you for me being allowed to be a part of the anthology, yeah. the gifts and of wisdom. I, I appreciate it. It's been very cathartic for me, you know, going back and thinking as far as my journey as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Your journey will be, and, and you being so generous about your journey um, will help so many others. And so I can't wait to see what this helps others, even it helps them decide not to go back. Like, great. At least, a, a, you know, they have a decision that that's a life, a big life decision. So whether it's towards the, 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 the ex or, away from the ex, either way, you get to make those choices and, and have a powerful life. And so I love that you were vulnerable enough to share your journey with us. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. More wisdom to come from Monica, uh, as I like to call her Moni in the middle. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing yourself with us. More wisdom, more jewelry, more love, more possibilities, and uh, more wisdom. Oh, see you later. Thank you.